Hey guys, I recorded this architecture review during a live stream and it has everything. It has machine learning with SageMaker, it has PostgreSQL, it has open data sets, Kubernetes, CloudFront, S2 in EC2 instances. Um, it's a huge use case and a really nice platform. So have fun with this. Leave a like if you like this and add a comment if you have questions regarding this use case. So let's get into it. Welcome to another episode of This Is My Architecture. I'm David John and I have with me Surya Kant from TCS. Hi Surya Kant, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me on the show. So a lot of us know about TCS. Tell us something about TCS DNA platform. TCS DNA stands for Digital Platform for Next Gen Agriculture. So this platform caters to the customers from agri-banking, agri-finance, and of course, to the farmers. Wonderful. So we are here to discuss about geospatial data analysis done using your DNA platform. So can you let me know what are the use cases this architecture caters to? Yeah, this platform currently covers around 329 million hectares of area, and it caters to around 20 use cases, which are related to crop area, crop health, the crop yield, and also about the soil moisture on the field level and the regional level. I'm wondering if they uh, now, from from this standpoint, I'm wondering if they are using images or if they are using sensor data for this. They're covering a large area, so most likely they use sensor data, uh, images, right? But mm, let's see. Let's see. I don't see here, I don't want to see Lambda, SageMaker, S3, yes, the phone S3. So most likely it's going to come in here that the people are take, taking screenshots or photos and the photos are getting dropped into S3. And then with open data like moisture and temperature, it's going to be um, intermixed, I'm guessing. So let's see. So that's some fantastic set of use cases. Uh, let's go a little bit deeper. So what are the data sources for this platform? Yeah, so this platform uh, uses four major data sources. The main data source that comes from the satellites is the open domain satellite data which is provided by the space agencies like ISRO and the NASA. The another set of data set which is available on the AWS, which is also the open data, but it has been readily made available by AWS on the S3 buckets. Third set of data set that we have is the field level data set collected by the field managers and the field agents. And that data is also collected as a GIS data into the PostgreSQL. Mm -hmm. So I see that the satellite data is being consumed, but in addition, you're also leveraging registry of open data on AWS. Why exactly is that? Yeah, so the registry of open data on AWS has helped us to reduce the data transfer costs. How is that? So they're they're getting images here, I'm guessing, from satellite data? What did, what did he say? That was an open, how did he call this? Open domain satellite data. GIS geography, NASA Earth data search. Okay. So the registry of open data on AWS has helped us to reduce the data transfer costs by providing the required number of spectral regions. For example, the satellite generally has the 13 spectral regions, but we use in our processing only the four spectral regions. And this registry of open data helps us to get only the required number of spectral regions. And it has reduced our data size from 60 terabytes to 20 terabytes. And we process this amount of data at interval of every five days to 10 days. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Glad that it was useful. So what happened? Just you have open data. So that open data, that's not their data. That's open data. That's already somebody put here on, on S3. I believe they're getting geospatial data in terms of coordinates. Ah, okay. Once the data is readily available. So once the data is readily available, the Lambda here, uh, it actuates the processing jobs on the SageMaker. So 3,400 processing jobs are parallelly spun by the SageMaker. And these jobs take input from the registry of open data, the data set from the satellites, the GIS data set from the government agencies, including the field boundaries. Mm -hmm. And this data set is, again, after processing, the output is pushed back in the form of zonal statistics to the PostgreSQL GIS database. And also in the form of image, it is pushed back to the S3 bucket. And this data set, uh, acts as a output to the end user. Right. So looks like... Of course, for a SageMaker, they're doing machine learning for it. They most likely create analysis for harvesting, when's the right point to harvest, when's the right point to uh, fertilize and so on. 
and they then send the data back to S3 here or the database so that when somebody, I'm guessing they have an app for this, right? So the app is then going to access the Postgres database to have the data or, and also be able to access the data from S3. What they're not mentioning here before here, of course, there's, there's going to be an API because you, you will not, <laughs> this will not be possible here that from an app you can directly access S3 or Postgres. You would not do this. You want to have an API in front of this. The parallel executions of SageMaker processing jobs seems to have given you the spatial and temporal scalability, which was much required. So who actually consumes this process data? Yeah, the users from agriculture sector consumes this data. The applications, the UI applications are deployed uh, using the EKS and which is obviously facilitated by the EC2 instances. Mm -hmm. The EKS, uh, the data moves from uh, EKS to the cloud front through the geospatial data uh, layers, and it is consumed by the user in the form of UI layers, and the user uh, gets about the data. So for example, here one use case, which is around uh, 10 GB of data, which has to be consumed by the user. So CloudFront helps us here to cache the data and uh, provide it to the user very efficiently and effectively. I don't get it. So they have the they have basically the data layer, right? That's the data layer here. Then they have then they have analytics, which is green here. That's that's analytics. And then they have that's provisioning. That's that's let's say this is engineering here. This is just engineering. And they have CloudFront, and CloudFront then gets the data. And the user can download data here. Download. So I because I was under the impression they are hosting a, a website or something here where the user can watch it. But it looks like the user can down actually download download data here, combination data or how much data did he say a user downloads? It helps us here to cache the data and uh, provide it to the user very efficiently and effectively. Is around, uh, for example, here one use case which is around ten gigabytes of data. So this the, the combination here that is ten gigabyte of data. Uh, ten GB of data which has to be consumed by the user. Which has to be consumed by the user. So who's the user then? An analyst here. So CloudFront helps us here to cache the data and uh, provide it to the user very efficiently and effectively. Okay. Why Postgres? I believe MongoDB would be a good fit also here using geospatial indexing. But again, it depends on the actual data, the use case. This Postgres database here, this is a AWS service. I don't think AWS actually has a MongoDB service. And you can also store in, in Postgres, you can also store documents. I would not necessarily go with MongoDB here. If you don't need the indexing, not necessarily. Good. Glad to hear. So CloudFront gives you better user experience and also reduces your data transfer cost when yeah. the maps are being consumed by the user. So I'm interested to find out what were some key challenges you faced and how does this platform address them? Yeah. The key challenges that we had here are in the form of scalability and the cost. So currently we are processing the data at a uh, India scale. So we can easily increase our spatial scale from India to any other countries like Indonesia or Thailand. Mm -hmm. And also uh, on the temporal side, we are currently processing the data at a days, a five day interval, and we can reduce that to even one day interval. So similarly, on the cost part, the SageMaker by parallelly spinning out the 3,400 processing jobs has helped us to reduce our processing cost. And the registry of open data has reduced our transfer data transfer cost. And the EKS, which is right now deployed on the Gravitron instances. It not only supports on the, uh, the cost uh, effective ways, but it also supports the environmental sustainability part. This platform, when you look at it, this platform, it handles data that doesn't change as fast, right? Because in agriculture, processes don't happen that fast. So that's why they process only once a day or once, or once every five days. And also the cloud front here, which is very effective in uh, producing the output for the end user through UI. So it has helped us to uh, easily scale our application to the any region and serve the content to the user very effectively. I'm thinking about what did he just say? He said 
they are CloudFront, they are showing the information on the web UI here for the user. So this, the CloudFront is basically a buffer for the data. It's not that the data is coming out of the Postgres database. They are updating the data in, or they're caching the data in CloudFront and the user user interface is basically when you look at graphs or something, you have graphs with 10,000 data points. These 10,000 data points don't come directly out of Postgres. They are somehow buffered in, in CloudFront as I, as I understand this. Hey guys, I'm just editing this video and I found out that I didn't understand this correctly while I was recording this. So how this actually works is you have the EC2 and this is where the user interface is running. And they, with the error, because the arrows and this here is very confusing. So the EC2 runs the user interface and EKS is used to spin up the user interfaces here. And that's the, that's the main goal here. You could also use it to spin up CloudFront, but I'm not sure how much sense that makes. And actually, so the users are getting the data through CloudFront, but not this way. The users are actually here on the left. They are accessing the EC2 and the EC2 is getting the data that is buffered in CloudFront from below here, from Postgres, most likely Postgres and, and uh, S3. I'm not 100% sure about that, but the so the, this is actually the other way around. The user is not here, but here accesses the EC2 that has been spun up by EKS and the EC2 gets the data not directly from the Postgres, but through CloudFront because it's buffered there and very quickly available and you don't need to go into a certain region or something to get the data always here for requests that are coming from the customer. So it's actually a interesting solution and I hope this makes it a bit clearer. Um, just don't understand how the Lambda is able to process the huge volume of data for five days. It has a lot of limitations, 15 minutes timeout memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they are, the Lambda function is not for processing the data. The Lambda function is for triggering the chops in SageMaker, for managing the SageMaker chops, as I understood in the beginning. We can, but we can go, we can go, they're almost finished. We can go back to that in a sec. It's fascinating how this architecture addresses some key challenges in the agriculture sector, let it be a farmer or the stakeholders. I also like the way in which you leverage registry of open data to pick up only certain spectral bands that makes sense. of satellite data and also parallel execution of SageMaker jobs, which gave you the spatial and temporal scalability. Using the GIS plugin for PostgreSQL also helped. And I like the way you use CloudFront to improve user experience and reduce data transfer cost. And all of this in a cost efficient manner. Thank you, Surya Kant, for being here on the show. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. This is my architecture. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning where he explained about Lambda. The Lambda here, uh, it actuates the processing job. It activates the, uh, I, I understand actuates, but it activates the processing jobs. You see, so Lambda is not here for, for data processing. It's only here for for basically triggering the, the, the uh, SageMaker. Okay. okay, that was interesting. What do you guys think? We've seen two very different jobs. Here, one is the platform for that is mainly for engineers and to spin up, spin up projects, spin up cloud platforms, or yeah, spin up projects with with infrastructure. And this one is for processing data for predefined use cases and and everything around that. Do you believe it's a fault torrent? Yeah, I think it's fault torrent because what what can happen here? Not a lot can happen here. SageMaker shop jobs could quit out but you most likely they most likely lock that um the data that is there it's very easy to place the data there so not a lot is going to happen all right guys thanks for being here i hope you had a great time let me know if you have a great time uh if you're on youtube hit the like button on this video and otherwise <laughs>